Hello and welcome to week four of HCA 528 Health Policy, where we will be discussing healthcare quality. So this is our agenda for our discussion for our discussion today. We'll be talking about issues around healthcare quality, patient safety, including including never events, other patient safety events, uh, rating systems for hospitals and providers. And I have a YouTube video, which is a rather heartbreaking discussion of a uh, patient safety incident and, and, and the effect that had on a on a, on the family, and then we also have our weekly discussion item uh, for the, for, the, um, for this for this particular topic. So, one item I do want to mention is a housekeeping item. I'll put these up each week as things are due. We do have the uh, the the draft of your individual research paper is due this week. And I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. Now, as I mentioned in the opening video, this is not graded. Uh, I am I I am looking to basically provide help and assistance for you. Um, it could be an outline if that's what you want what you want to do. Uh, I guess sometimes I have students really sweat over this. Please don't. It is designed strictly to help you, and I'm not looking to catch anybody out. I'm just looking to provide assistance. So, if you have, so please get me get me your drafts on that this week, and I'll get you feedback on that. So, let's talk a bit about about healthcare quality and and, and issues related to that. So, the ma the major topics that we're going to deal with are going to be patient outcomes. Uh, patient safety, including never events in healthcare acquired conditions and other other complications and other areas that affect healthcare quality. So, is, is patient safety a problem? Uh, one of the first major reports on patient safety came out in 1999, over to almost 25 years ago now, and this was um, this was this was a um, a report called from the Institute of Medicine called "To Air Is Human." It is uh, probably one of the landmark reports on patient safety that has been done before or since. Um, and based upon the information they provided at the time, between 44,000 and 998,000 deaths per year were due to medical errors. Now, just to just to put that into context, 98,000 deaths per year is equivalent to one fully loaded 747 jumbo jet or 787 jumbo jet crashing every day with the loss of all hands, all, all passengers and crew. Now, I'd like you to ask yourself how long the airline industry would would be would still be in business if the, if there were um, if there were accident statistics like that. I don't think it would be in business in business for very long at all. Then we had. In 2000, fast forward to 2010, we're getting more more recent. We have another major report that's come out. This is by the Office of Inspector General at the Department of Health and Health and Human Services, and this was just on just looking at Medicare alone, and their estimate was which was was approximately 180,000 deaths per year due to poor hospital care and and bad hospital practices. That's roughly the profit, That's roughly the population of Providence, Rhode Island, just gone every year. So. Uh, if those if those numbers are to be uh, given credence to, and here we have another report suggesting it might even be worse than that. This was the Journal of Patient Safety. They estimate between 210,000 and 440,000 deaths per year uh, are the result uh, are the result due to due to preventable harm to patients. This is roughly the population of Omaha, Nebraska. And if that were the case, it would make medical errors the third leading cause of death in the United States. So um, the 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 implications and the consequences of this issue cannot be overstated in terms of in terms of what their of what their impact can be on the healthcare system and on patients and on patients' families. So there there are. The, the issues around patient care and patient safety are divided into, some, in, into a couple of categories. The first category I want to discuss is never events. This is a, this is a category, this was a characterization that was developed by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality back in 2001. And a never event is exactly what it describes. It is things that should never happen. Um, and this is this is events that states require, or at least most states require, ma uh, mandatory reporting of these events when they when they happen. There are, unfortunately, some states that still don't 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 require.
require reporting of this. But these are things that absolutely should never happen. And I'm going to go through uh, the bulk of them with you because I think they're I think they're so important. So so. Some of the issues around never events, first of all, we have surgical events that are never events. So surgery on the wrong body part, procedure performed on the wrong patient, wrong procedure performed on the wrong patient, on, on, the, on the wrong patient. Uh, a, a foreign object or body part left in a patient after a procedure or a post-procedure death in a, in a low-risk patient. So here you have, um, you, you, these, are, these are things that you often hear horror stories about. People, uh, you have somebody who has, who has to have a, have a kidney removed and they, and, and they remove the wrong kidney. A patient who has uh, shoulder surgery on the left shoulder and they, put it on the, and they do it on the right shoulder. Um, or a knee replacement on the left knee and they do it on the right knee. Um, so these are events that used to be fairly common, unfortunately, and, and fortunately with, with, with improved procedures, they are, no, they, are, they are no longer as common as they used to be. I myself had, I had a, about 15 years ago, I had a bicycling accident and broke my shoulder and I was brought into the hospital to get it worked on. I asked the nurse to borrow a marker and I wrote no on the wrong shoulder. She said, don't worry, I was about to write yes on the, on, on the, on the correct one. So uh, we were both on the same page on that and I had the correct surgery. But these are, these are things that are certainly of a, a potential, of, of a potential issue. This is especially true in hospitals where patients move around. They move rooms a lot. And uh, you could walk in thinking, so I'm thinking it's patient X is sitting in a bed and it's really patient Y. And so you can see how things like that happen. That's why you see a lot of repetitive procedures put in place in the hospitals where the, every time a nurse walks into a patient room, they ask you for your name, for your name and date of birth. They verify, verify, verify everything. And so you're seeing a lot of these kind of almost redundant sounding practices that are designed to, pre to prevent these exact, things, these exact, exact things from happening. Another another category of never events are product or device events. So this is death or serious injury injury associated with with use of contaminated drugs, but devices or or, um, or bi biologics. Deaths or serious injury with those where where a device is used for a function other than what it was designed for. Um, uh, death or serious injury associated with a, with an air embolism, a, 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 um, an air bubble in someone's circulatory system, so there was air put into an IV that got into your system. So these are these are also a classification of never events. Other other categories of, of uh, never events are, are patient protection events. So you have a patient discharge who is unable to make decisions uh, to other than that so other, to, to someone other than there's authorized to make decisions for them. You could have, a, um, I had a situation, I had a neighbor uh, uh, discharged from a hospital um, uh, a, a few years ago. He had just had a stroke. He was literally dumped out of a, out of a taxi into his house. His house had not had, he hadn't, he had been in the hospital for like three months. All of his utilities had been shut off for non-payment. They just dumped him there. And, the, and uh, my wife and I had to try and provide some emergency care for him. It was an absolutely disgraceful situation. You could have death, uh, death, or, death or disability desired associated with with a patient, a patient what's called patient elopement. The patient just gets just gets up and disappears. Um, you have a patient suicide, attempted suicide, or self harm uh, while being cared for in a healthcare facility. These are these this, these these are things that should not happen. Some other other events, care management events, so medication error, wrong drug, drug drug dose, patient. Uh, 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 patient time, rate preparation. Um, you, I've seen some of these things can be associated with uh, 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 with improper IT systems. You have a drug being on uh, being ordered for for a patient in a certain bed, and the uh, the physician decides to countermand that that drug order because of additional information they've received. But the the IT system delays uh, the um, the update being sent out to the page to the uh, Computer systems and and the nurse delivers the drug before the before the information is updated. These type of things can happen. Uh, unsafe administration of blood products, um, um, maternal death, uh, maternal death from a low risk pregnancy, uh, artificial insemination with the wrong sperm or wrong egg, uh, death of serious injury associated with a patient fall. These are all situations around a, a, a care a care management event. Patient falls are a are to this day a very serious problem in hospitals. Uh, you have um, hospitals have spent a, a fair amount of time trying to identify a patient who is a fall risk. 
um, patients who have had uh, had had history of stroke or dizziness or uh, previous falls or certainly or certainly fall risks. Patients who have who have mobility issues are certainly are certainly fall risks. And these are these are patients that need to be cared for, and it, and it can it can result in some un difficult situations around staffing. If I'm a nurse manager in charge of of a group of rooms, and on, and then one night for luck of the draw, all of my patients are fall risks, and they all have to go to the bathroom at the same time, and I only have two staff on two staff on duty. I'm going to have a problem. So you run into situations that 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 feed into how you staff, how you how you plan your shifts, what who who comes in what time are 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 things that are that, that are done to try and mitigate these the, the, um, these, these events and, and, and prevent them before they happen. Yeah, you have uh, there are other other care other care management events, de death or de death or disability resulting from um, uh, air, um, a, a loss of a, of, a, of a biological specimen, uh, failure to communicate laboratory pathology or radiology test results uh, in a, in, a, in an adequate time. These are these are things that can all uh, cause serious issues. Uh, stage stage three or stage four um, uh, pressure ulcers after after um, admission. Uh, pressure ulcers can be very, very difficult to deal with. If you know anybody who has, who has dealt with them or if you've dealt with them yourself, those are very difficult to deal with. Then we have, then we have environmental deaths. We have uh, patient patient receiving an electric shock from the um, e uh, equipment. You, uh, um, oxygen oxygen uh, system malfunction. Uh, burns in, in, in the, in the uh, in the hospital, inappropriate use of patient restraints that can cause that can cause um, strangulation, suffocation, uh, while while a patient's in in, in is in the uh, facility's care. Then you have radio radiologic events. You have a, you have a um, metallic object in a, in a, uh, being used in a um, MRI where it's where it's not supposed to be there because the patient wasn't checked properly. Uh, criminal events, somebody impersonating a physician, nurse, or pharmacist. These type of things can happen. Abduction of a patient, uh, sexual abuse or, or assault of a patient, de uh, death of a de death of a patient or staff member from a physical assault that occurs on the healthcare uh, systems grounds. These are uh, these are all things that can that can happen within within a health system and within a healthcare setting that need that need to be planned for and need and need to be dealt with. I've worked with hospitals that are also a primary a primary feeder for um, for for the for the local prison. So you have to deal with security issues around that, and you have you have situations where you may have somebody in who was a victim of an assault, and uh, somebody may want to come back into the hospital and try to try to try to uh, finish that finish that job. Some of the things you might see on see on TV could actually happen in real life. So these are all categorized as, as uh, never events. And there and there are some here are some here are some dist, uh, distributions of, of um, never events. Some of this information is old, but it hasn't changed a great deal. So you see things like wrong side surgery and suicide are, are actually are actually quite high. Um, medication errors, patient pa um, patient um, patient falls are actually are, uh, they're uh, they're um, up there. You can, uh, pressure ulcers are, uh, are are at a pretty high level, sort of coming out of uh, some reports from Minnesota. You can see that these are these are things that are that are out there and they are happening now. What has what we have seen in the last few years is that the numbers of these reported events do seem to be declining. And there have been some, uh, and, and a lot of this is due to hospitals taking this more seriously, instituting um, instituting repetitive um, repetitive procedures, instituting checklists. There's been a lot of learning happening in healthcare, actually taken out of aviation. Uh, so is there there is a reason why we don't have fully loaded 747s crashing every day, and that's because of the safety protocols that are that are put in place in our aviation system through the uh, through the through the aviation carriers and the and the FAA. Uh, there has been some some learning happening in healthcare as a result of that. So now that we've talked about um, uh, about never events, there are a number of other patient safety indicators which are, which are also which are also being be monitored in, in a variety of places. Now there are many agencies that keep track 
of patient safety and patient safety indicators. So there are state patient safety organizations within many states. I believe there's one in Rhode Island. There's definitely one in Massachusetts. I've worked with some in Pennsylvania. I've worked with some in Oregon uh, and um, Minnesota uh, doing, doing those, doing those um, um, activities and uh, initiatives. There is the Joint Commission, where if you work within a hospital, you hear that name, you are quite familiar with it. They are a major accrediting body for uh, working with hospitals. And you have the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services through the federal government, or CMS. Uh, these are all agencies that keep track of patient safety incidents. So uh, the, a number of patient safety uh, indicators that are um, that are tracked are deaths in low mortality related diagnostic research uh, diagnostic related groups or DRGs. So if you are in a DRG, if you have a DRG cat, a categorization that indicates you have a low mortality and you die in the hospital, that's going to create a review. Uh, so why is it, why is a low risk patient all of a sudden die? Uh, pressure ulcers, as mentioned before, those are patient safety indicators. Deaths among surgical inpatients with serious with serious treatable conditions is a patient patient uh, is a patient safety um, indicator. Uh, 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 CBT bl uh, um, um, bloodstream bloodstream uh, infections, hospital falls, hemorrhage or hematoma, these are all patient safety indicators. Have, and then here you here you have more, you have more on the list. You have postoperative respiratory flavor, respiratory failure, uh, postoperative sepsis, which is a very very serious condition, uh, a wound dehiscence rate, which is basically a, a wound which reopens. Uh, you have uh, reaction to transfusion. You have birth trauma injury injury to a, to a neonate. You have you have OB trauma in terms of with either vaginal delivery with or without instruments. You can have those are all patient safety indicators. Then, then another category of patient safety is hospital acquired conditions. These are things which happen to a patient while under a hospital's care. So these are significant pets, threats to patient safety. And, so, and the most common are the, to, are, the, are the two at the top, the central line infection and the catheter urinary tract infection. They're often referred to as cauties and collapses. And uh, these, are, um, these are monitored very, very closely among hospital staff. And you often see hospital staff dedicated to this very item, uh, tracking and, and, and monitoring these, uh, these hospital acquired conditions. You have post-surgical wound infection. So if you do a surgery on somebody and there is a post-operative infection, that is monitored very, very, very closely. Um, then you have sepsis and, and again, pressure ulcers. Sepsis is a very serious condition and can result in your patient stay being, being increased by a factor of two or three, a uh, significant increase in costs and, uh, uh, and, and stay um, uh, statistics and also uh, very, very significant uh, adverse, adverse effects on the, on the, uh, on the uh, patient. Another reason why these are monitored very, very carefully. Other and, and there are other areas involved in, uh, um, impacting impacting quality that just deal with how a, how a hospital or how a healthcare system provides its services, such as can you get an appointment at the with your with your physician when you when you all want to be able to get them. We all have had our encounters with trying to trying to schedule an appointment with somebody, and they're like, "Well, we'll see you in, we'll see you in eight months," and you think you have you have you have something where you think you might you might you might need, need to be you might need to be seen sooner than that. I've known folks who have had Concerns about possibly having having cancer can't get appointments from months out. Um, is the is the is the hospital is the office staff responsive to what you're to what you're all trying to do? And there are um, there are hospitals that will they have they have affiliated physicians and what they're what they're finding is that if people who were who were admitted to the hospital aren't seeing their affiliated physicians physicians they're going elsewhere because they aren't getting appropriate services. That's 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 called leakage, and that has a significant impact on the on the health system's bottom line. So these are all um, yeah. There are other other areas impacting quality. If you if you if you're admitted to an emergency room, for example, or if you come into an emergency room, and you are waiting for hours to see somebody, that is that is a piece of, piece of information that is um, that is tracked. So there's a time for which you you enter in the facility, the time to which you're seeing somebody. That's called door to dock. So it, uh, if you, if those numbers are getting are getting too high, then people have got to start working on their working on their um, their uh, I mean how they're 
how they're doing with their shifts, how they're dealing with their staff turnover or, or the staffing or, 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 or um, anything else. Another, another area that's, that impacts quality for, for inpatients is noise. Um, if it, it, it's only been a relatively recent thing, but if you see orderlies working around a, uh, a hospital floor, a lot of them are wearing uh, soundproof shoes. They'll have like cloth uh, wraps put on their shoes so they make as little noise as possible. Equipment is set up to make as little noise as possible. If you have, um, if you're overnight in a hospital and you have orderlies banging around at two o'clock in the morning, Patients aren't going to get a good night's sleep, so you have to pretend that you can sleep in the hospital, and that's that's going to also impact you, impact your patient quality. It's going to impact your impact your your stay. It's going to impact you post post discharge, and you may have a you know you may have a situation where if you're if you're taking care of your noise situations, you know maybe an eight year old kid in for a you know, in for an overnight procedure will find the stay just a little bit less scary than they would have otherwise, and these. You know, there are, I tell people you can you can look at numbers around this, but in the end, there are real life people at the end of that chain who have their own real life issues and challenges. And it is our it is, it is our responsibility as caretakers in the system to uh, to treat them as well and as compassionately as possible. So getting on to that, then you have other organizations which track patient satisfaction, because especially now people will, uh, people who are dissatisfied with the care can go elsewhere, um, and especially in, especially in uh, you know, high dense areas, uh, hospitals and health systems monitor these, these, these reports very, very carefully. The most common firm for collecting patient, uh, patient satisfaction, that is patient satisfaction report, reports is a firm called Press Ganey. And you have physicians and facilities are rated on a number of, a number of metrics within that. Now, there is another issue with patient safety reports, and that is um, there are sometimes physicians are rated poorly uh, from reports such as Press Ganey because the physicians are insisting that patients, especially patients who may be having, you know, like who have lifestyle conditions such as such as diabetes and obesity and, and, and hypertension, they're being told you have to, they've been, they're being urged to make lifestyle changes. And sometimes people don't like to hear information like that. Physicians might actually get dinged on the press gaining report because they're, they're not, um, they're not hearing it when people are, are complaining that they, they want to be able to make any, they don't want to be able to make any changes in their, in their lives. So press, the, these type of reports can be a double edged sword in some, in some respects. You have another, um, uh, you have through the, through the federal government, you have what are called, what are called HCAP scores. And this is hospital. This is, and and that stands for Hospital and Consumer Awareness of Healthcare Providers and Systems. These reports are, are also filtered in to uh, a broad a broad spectrum of patient satisfaction reports. And these the, the, this this information is it is available out to out to the public through um, a number a number of means. Now that these these sites are developing they are getting better every year uh and a lot of times they're uh people don't have a have a hard time under understanding what to, what to do with them but they are available one of the most common ones out there is called hospital compare it's run through it's run through medicare where you where you compare hospitals on a variety of performance metrics and performance measures and some of the some of the examples are are, are listed down below here you also have an Another group, which especially on the patient safety front, um, is been they have done tremendous work over the years. They're called the Leapfrog Group, and you can go onto their site, leapfrog.org, and you can you can rate hospitals and you can help choose a hospital in terms of where you might be looking to go for a certain classification or procedure of care. Another uh, another uh, organ uh, you also have Physician Compare, and this is run through. Uh, Medicare, where you can compare individual physicians based upon their performance as well, and, and this data is becoming more and more common as um, as these uh, systems are becoming more sophisticated to make these comparisons. So the the, the other piece I want to mention is there is a uh, TED talk uh, from this woman Leanna Schweitzer uh, who is talking about a an incident involving her family. It is a it is a heartbreaking story, and she talks about the um, the the issues that that she and her and her family and her family dealt with, 
and the efforts from the from the hospital system to deal with the situation um there it is it, it's a it's a very compelling story and i will and i i i urge you to um uh to watch that and then we have our discussion topic for this week which is again dealing with with quality and safety what is the most important thing you would want to change to impact healthcare quality and safety and i know many folks in this in this in, the, in this course work in healthcare so i'd be interested in your perspectives from working in healthcare have you have seen things on your if you have seen things yourselves that you would like to see changed or um and i and, and any other comments that that you might have on that i'd be very interested to hear what you have to say on that so that is it for this week and i again i look forward to uh, speaking with you further and uh, we will talk to you later thank you